before you know uh, we have to use visual documentation to bring this back for other brothers and sisters to see it because they may not never make it back like you but there were many invasions that came into Africa when Norma that we dealt with earlier when we talk about Norma when he reunited upper and lower Egypt first defeating the scorpion bringing together the first world government but it spoke of the Asiatic invasions even back during his time Egypt faced many invasions that came in by way of the Delta these were the Asiatics that you see right here now as I mentioned before, the Asiatics who came across the Sinai. So here we see the earliest recording of these people who came in and settled with us for a while, today built in numbers, and then eventually attacking Egypt. This is again from Khanumhotep's tomb from the 12th dynastic period, right uh, during the time of Amenhotep III. Here again, Menethos talks about, now you can see the Hyksoks who came into Egypt, and Manetho said, unexpectedly from the region of the east came men of unknown race. Confident of the victory, they marched against our land. By force, they took it easy without a single battle. Having overpowered our rulers, they burned our cities without compassion and destroyed the temples. All the people were treated with great cruelty, for they slew some and carried off the wives of children of others into slavery. Doesn't that sound like a familiar account? This period is documented around... Uh, 1650 or 1750, right around the same time of Abraham. Now, take a good look of the pictures that I showed earlier too. These were the hike soaks that you see right here. These were the invaders, just as you see them carved in stone right here. These are the people who came out of the Sinai. Some say from Mitanni, uh, some say they were Horians. These are the Tamarians who were indigenous to the Nile Valley, as well as the Tanihisian brothers who were further up in the southern part of uh, Egypt or Kemet ancient Ethiopia as some would call it. These were the Tamahu people who invaded from Libya from the west. They attacked Egypt after the sixth dynastic period. Now, it was, it, it was this brother that we showed again, Atmos I, who finally expelled them out of our land. Now I'm showing this in reference with the temple, how our ancestors, you're witnessing, recording these people who came into our land, who invaded until Atmos I finally expelled them. We want to give you documented evidence to show you that we were at war with these people who invaded our land. We did not have anyone enslaved, but in fact, the Hyke Soaks enslaved us for 200 years. If we deal with the 21st Dynasty, 22nd Dynasty, 23rd Dynasty, these were all Asiatic. Shishak, the Badawi will show us in a little while, he was also of Asiatic origin. So again, indigenous African Kemetic people were not even on the throne then. This is why this is so important to understand this in the Bible because by looking at the Bible in America and the Western world, they look at this as all being part of Egypt, not saying that we were enslaved ourselves by these Asiatic people. And the same people who are ruling us today, who are exploiting us out of our minds, are the same people who invaded our land long ago, who came in even during the time of the 12th dynastic period, right after Amenhotep. And we called them the troglodytes who came out of the desert. How can we dispute this documented evidence, documented information? But the only way we're going to get this story right, we're going to have to start writing our own holy text because if everybody else have had their story and revised the Bible, then why can't we, the original writers of the book, bring it back to its African origin? Now right here on these temples here, now you can see documented where we tied them up, roped them, and forced them out of our land. These are the people that we've always had problems with. The problem is we don't understand a historical war. It's a historical war with these people. And European Ashkenazi, European Jews know this. We're the people who don't know it. It's an ancient historical war from the time we've had contact with them. So we're coming back here and hearing the words of our ancestors and those who knew what happened in that day, and that's why they had to turn the story against African people. So you're coming back for an eyewitness account, not for spiritual enslavement, but for spiritual freedom, for the emancipation of our souls, for the resurrection of African people. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. For many years, brothers and sisters returned back with us on the Kemet New Know Thyself Educational Tour to see an eyewitness account what our ancestors wrote for us on the temples and tombs which are books in stone that now end up in many of the biblical stories today. Let's continue with the live lecture. These are the people who enslaved our people. These people set up in an area of Kemet in Lower Kemet called Avaris, took over, and were enslaving the Africans for over 200 years until 2nd Enre Tau of the 17th dynasty and it is he who raised war on the battlefield and his life was lost on the battlefield and it was his son Katmos who continued the battle until his son 
our utmost who opened up the 18th dynasty. This is a real person, brothers and sisters, who said never again. He was the liberator, the emancipator, who kicked these Hicksokes out of our land. This is the real historical account that we've got to start teaching our people, brothers and sisters. So they took from this African right here, his name at most, and made a Moses. This is the only account that we expelled a large group of people out of our land, this African right here, who opened up the 18th dynasty known as the Golden Age. Mm. This is the historical account, brothers and sisters. In fact, let's go into another warrior soldier, as we see in his uh, name, Men Kepara, Tehuti Maze. He had 17 battles and won them all. He also wanted to make sure that these Hicksokes were not going to come into our land. Here you see Men Kepara's battle, showing where he's battling the Hicksokes. Look at some of them hiding behind trees as cowards right here. This is the story that our ancestors left us in stone as though they knew that one day we would forget our story. Mm. Here's the battle of Men Kepara who battled and wanted to make sure these Hicksos were not going to come into our land. In fact, this brother, he made sure that he even educated these people he was conquering into the Kemetic uh, history, okay, initiated them into a make sure that they will keep control of people that they're conquering. Mm -hmm. So that brother was brilliant. In fact, he put a whooping on a city so bad called Megiddo. Do you know this is where the name Army getting from came from, Megiddo right here? Mm -hmm. That's where the origin of that name came from. But this is the brother, Ursama Art Rasip Tepin Rawa Mesumori Amin, a little practice you can say it too. He also had to fight some people called the Hittites. See, we're constantly at war with these people coming from the north, brothers and sisters. We left the reliefs over 3,000 years ago carved in stone. In fact, there's one story right here where Ursa Ma'at Ra told his generals, he said, cut off the right hand of the enemy. But he noticed that the right hand and the left hand was turning up. He told them to cut off the right hand to make sure that they weren't cowards. So he said, the enemy only has one of one thing I know they got, and that's the penis, the foreskin. So he told them to cut off the foreskin, and that's what you see right here, the foreskin right here. These are stories and accounts that's carved on these temples, brothers and sisters. Our story is here. Now, what does that have to do with the scriptures? Well, let's go to Samuel, and it talks about David wants to marry the daughter of uh, Saul. So Saul tells him to go and do what? Cut off the foreskin of the Philistines, as it says mm. in Samuel chapter 18, verse 27. Wherefore David arose and went, and he and his men, and slew of the Philistines. 200 men and David brought their foreskins and they gave them the full tale to the king that he might uh, be the king's son-in-law. So here you got it written here in Saul, but long before Saul, our ancestors cut off the foreskin where Ramesu told his generals to cut off the right hand and he noticed right and left hands were turning up and he told them to cut off the foreskins where it ended up in Saul in the Bible. What makes uh, somebody who just Put it on some paper versus that which is carved in stone. Spiritual enslavement.